Atos. So I just want to start by saying that I'm very clear in my head, we're not in an energy transition, Energiewende, as we say in German. It's a revolution, and let me just explain why. The first and foremost is the Russian crisis. This is a complete game changer in terms of energy, because what it suddenly means is that we have to decarbonize heat. And what we've done for the last 20 years is we've de decarbonized electricity. The second thing is China, and I want to just give you an idea of what China is doing in terms of scale. On the right there, you can just look at solar. Solar this year, the demand is about a gigawatt a day. China will have 1,000 gigawatts in capacity by the end of next year, right? If you look in terms of deployment of technologies, EVs, et cetera, et cetera, China leads the revolution because they know it's a revolution, right? Third thing I would say to you is geopolitics is pushing change. I think we see what's going on in the US. They're reacting. They're sort of saying, okay, well, China's doing something we're not. What are we going to do? Guess what? Europe's doing the same thing. India is doing the same thing. What does all this do? It means, it means competition. Kind of a competition means decreased prices and more innovation. Fourth thing is speed of technology change is relentless. I just give the four examples there are key technologies, but if I look going forward, I would add to that power electronics, I'll add to that digitalization, I'll add to that heat pumps, huge you know, electrolyzers, etc., etc. Speed of change, relentless. Fifth thing is We've got, great motor, we've got great entrepreneurs across the world in this space, right? This is very important because for many years, in the, what we had in this space was not success. But if you see Elon Musk today, you realize, oh my God, there is an opportunity that's ginormous. And these have an ecosystem and they push money into the system and the rest is history, right? The final thing is climate change. I'll just show you that graph on the right-hand side. Just as right, this is from last week. Um, they do, cannot explain the anomalies in temperatures in the North Atlantic at present, but what it means is Ireland, where I come from at present, has temperatures of 27 degrees, right? That's what it means. The um, other thing that happens is people want change, and I mean just in terms of, it's also not just about climate change anymore, it's about energy cost. Everybody in Europe wants to lower their energy costs, whether you're an industrial, com commercial customer, retail customer. If I look forward, the good news is that Europe has woken up. It used to be that Europe had goals about carbon and this, that, and the other thing, but now what they're doing is they're tying industrial policy to energy policy to foreign policy. That's a huge, huge game changer. By the way, this is what China has been doing for years. Next thing that happens is we're going to decarbonize heat. The good news is we have examples of that already. The Nordics have already done it. Norway, Finland, Sweden, they already electrifies heat. So we just have to learn from them and follow what they're doing. I will say, if you look at the market this year, give you an idea, this is global batteries across the world. What you're seeing is a doubling of investments in batteries. Interesting statistic from the IEA is this, that there will be more money put in solar this year than there will in oil. Just realize what I said. That's, that is, really is a big game changer to say this. Other thing I'd say is 30% growth in EV demand. 20% of all autos this year are sold will be electric. And by the way, in China, it was 35% in May. Just realize what I said, 35% all cars in China were electric, right? And it's not just cars that are electrifying. We're still driving around our internal combustion engine scooters. They're not doing this in Asia. You can see why 39% of new scooters are fully electric. And I want to say the massive, the opportunity is massive, and this is really what excites me in all of it. We probably have about one and a half billion or trillion that is spent in the, in the energy efficiency and renewable area per year. We we'll probably need to get to four and a half trillion, right? So huge, huge opportunity for everybody. It's out there. What I will say is many of the incumbents, including the global leaders, will not survive. I mean, I, can, I look at the German automobile industry and I look at, sorry, the tier one suppliers, tier two suppliers. I say, well, why am I going to buy a part from you? when I can buy, you know, when, I ha when, when actually China leads in batteries, electric drives, power electronics, what am I going to do? Why am I going to buy from you, right? But I would also say it's not just that, it's also energy companies. If you own a gas pipeline today, you're going to try and persuade us all that we're going to actually convert that into a, into a hydrogen pipeline. That's natural, right? So you can see very, very clear resistance from incumbents going forward. But my last word to you, and I'll stop, is I just want to just show you the numbers in China so you give an idea. This is climate tech Im investments last year, and you can see that China down the bottom with 40 billion 
is about two times the whole of Europe put together. Okay, so we're behind when it comes to venture capital and growth investments. More importantly, you look on the right-hand side, and this is investments in factories. This is solar factories, this is wind factories, this is electrolyzers, this is batteries. And you suddenly see last year, 90% of capex into new factories went into China. And so what I say to you all in the room here, that's your challenge. You're all finance people and investors. Let's scale up business and take on the Chinese, because if we don't, they're going to win this revolution going forward. On that note, I'll stop. I wish you all a great day and tomorrow as well. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.